Good morning uh, or afternoon, everyone. I'm Robbie Diamond, the founder and CEO of SAFE. I'd like to welcome you to our inaugural Center for Strategic Materials uh, webinar. Uh, we're pleased to have with, uh, with us today Nancy Gillis, who's the program head at the World Economic Forum of the First Movers uh, Coalition. And we're excited to hear when she shares with us the details of their aluminum program. Um, Nancy, thanks so much for uh, being here with us. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Joe Quinn, who's our Vice President of Strategic Industrial Materials and the Director of the Center. And you'll hear from him in a, in a few moments. Um, first, I just wanna set up um, as I usually do, how SAFE, an organization that started in 2004 to end oil dependence or economic na and national security, got into the aluminum business. Um, it wasn't that I looked down one day at my recycle bin and said, geez, I need to get into the aluminum business. It was really us thinking about the strategic risks we have for key materials um, for the United States um, and our allies. But to step back in 2004, when we started, we really were focused on oil because it was an economic and national security risk. We have two wars going on, a global war on terror, we're not living by our values. Every, every recession was preceded by an oil price spike. The volatility has been devastating to our, our country and to our citizens. And we put together a group of four-star admirals and generals and CEOs to end this dependence by promoting the production of energy domestically with high environmental standards, the use of that energy efficiently through fuel efficiency standards, and finally, the diversification away from oil using electric uh, vehicles in particular, where the fuels are domestic, stable, and diverse. Now, having done that in 2004, um, all the way, uh, let's say, uh, until about five years ago, we started thinking to ourselves, where are these vehicles coming from? And where are the batteries of the future going to come from? And of course, we decided that it would be really bad for an organization that felt that we should live by our values and protect the blood and treasure, both of the United States and of our allies, to go from the Saudi frying pan into the Beijing battery fire. So started a, a group uh, of work called the Commanding Heights Initiative, where we created a Center for Strategic Minerals uh, Strategy, this uh, Center for uh, Industrial Materials and a Semiconductor Center. Basically, if it's in an F-150 Lightning and in an F-35, we should care about where it comes from and how it's built. And so having Joe uh, work on the material side in aluminum, which is so important to this. I mean, one of the most profound um, decisions on an oil basis was actually Ford's decision to take its F-150, which is the best-selling car in the history of the United States over four decades, and turn it from a steel platform to an aluminum platform because aluminum is so much uh, um, lighter. And so the United States is here uh, now and, uh, and our allies, you know, really are losing a lot of their ability to produce uh, the primary aluminum and then, of course, the secondary. The thing about aluminum that's so exciting and I think you'll hear about and I won't have all my numbers correct, but 5% of all, 4% uh, of all electricity in the world is used to uh, smelt aluminum. It's basically solid electricity, but even more exciting that if you recycle it, only 8% of the same electricity is needed. So when you think about aluminum that will be needed for our vehicles of the future, our uh, solar panels, our wind turbines, all these things where we go from a fossil world to a materials world, the weapon systems that we now see are so critical um, as we fight authoritarianism um, in Europe and, and we'll have to, hopefully not, in other parts of the world, we just need to make sure we have uh, primary um, aluminum, secondary aluminum, and the circularity. So we're really excited to uh, put a focus on this from an economic and national security perspective. And uh, thank you all for uh, being here um, now. And uh, I will then turn it over to, uh, to Joe. Thank you, Robbie, and good morning, everyone. So glad you could join us. Uh, as Robbie mentioned, our Center for Strategic Industrial Materials, we're looking at the full value chain of aluminum from the energy input side to the production phase, and then of course to the use phase and the market side of things. 
the aluminum sector is expected to grow over the next 20 years as government leaders pursue policies to ensure supply chains of vital materials while also improving environmental outcomes. So we thought examining the feasibility to reshore primary aluminum production to help expand U.S. capacity <clears throat> could reduce the carbon emissions, uh, but also provide a cost advantage to U.S. automakers. As Robbie was saying, that transition from the steel body to the aluminum body is where we're going to go when it comes to uh, the energy transition. Later this month, uh, the center, we're going to release our first aluminum report titled The Aluminum Industry's Energy Problem and Energy Solution. Those of you who know this sector know the vital role of energy, the affordability, the availability, the reliability. It truly can make or break this sector. Our first report is going to analyze that dichotomy <clears throat> between the rising demand for aluminum use and its energy saving properties <clears throat> up against the, the energy intensity of the primary production phase. So we want to use it to save energy, but we need so much of it to produce it in the first place and all the challenges that lie in there. So there's an, an, an aluminum industry perspective on it. But the big takeaway, the global look at this thing, is that without decarbonizing and revitalizing the U.S. primary sector, the United States is looking to increase reliance on UAE, China, and Russia for critical infrastructures, military needs, and the clean technologies. We'll have much more to say about this later this month, so please keep an eye out for this report. But for today, uh, we want to focus on that third phase. So there's energy input, there's the production. The third part is the end use and the market side of things. I'm so glad to introduce our guest today, Nancy Gillis. She's now with the World Economic Forum. Previously, she was the CEO of the Global Electronics Council. And prior to that, she served as the global lead for resilient and responsible supply chains at Ernst & Young. Uh, before I turn this over to Nancy, I would like to ask the audience to please submit your questions in the Q&A function. Uh, Nancy will give a presentation here and then I'll moderate the questions afterwards. Looking forward to hearing from you and uh, what you have to ask of Nancy. So with that, let me turn things over. Nancy, please tell us more about Economic Forum, uh, the First Movers Coalition and the Aluminum Program. Great, thank you so much, Joe, for this opportunity and Robbie as well. Um, the World Economic Forum, of course, is an organization that is global uh, in focus, World Economic Forum. So whereas we do appreciate the emphasis on the United States, I do want to be clear that the First Movers Coalition, we are a global initiative and have members represented from uh, global industry players. But of course, there is interest in what the United States is doing because the First Movers Coalition came to fruition in a partnership between the World Economic Forum and the U.S. government. And I have a presentation that will give some background about why we were formulated, what our focus on primary and recycled aluminum uh, is about, and what this means as far as bringing innovative clean technologies into the market, because as you mentioned, these are really the ones that make uh, the availability of aluminum that's in and of itself uh, very powerful from an environmental perspective, makes it even more compelling. So that, let me go ahead and bring up my presentation and go ahead and share a little bit about what it is when we talk about the First Movers Coalition. So as you see here, uh, my intro slide of the First Movers Coalition. So what does it actually stand for? Well, the First Movers Coalition is what we like to call a demand initiative. So this means that instead of the idea of build it and they will come, um, it's we have brought the market, the demand, and now we're trying to incentivize the technologies that are out there, but not commercially available to come into the market. So we are a demand initiative that's focused on what some call hard to abate sectors when you start thinking about climate change and greenhouse gases. I like to call these the economically essential sectors because these are the four material sectors and the three transportation sectors that if you're an organization anywhere globally, you really can't do without them. So from a materials perspective, of course they focus on aluminum, but we've also got steel, cement and concrete, and we call it chemicals, but really we're focused on plastics or olefins. 
And then when you talk about transport, which is also these economically essential sectors, it's pretty simple. It's shipping, it's trucking, and it's aviation. So the First Movers Coalition is a program. And here at the World Economic Forum, I'm actually speaking on behalf of the Secretariat. So we serve as the Secretariat. And again, it's focused on creating demand for clean, innovative technologies in the sectors that I've mentioned, these economically essential sectors. And why is creating demand so important? Well, anybody who's been in the technology arena, we kind of understand that great new ideas come out and then they sit there. And their challenge is, especially if they're going to be impactful, is to cross over what we see here as the valley of death. And this is uh, something that's been out there for a long time. How do you make that happen? How do you make something that intrinsically is good, but nobody knows about, cross over that valley of death? And what does it mean to cross over the valley of death? It means it becomes commercialized. What's commercialized mean? It means it's out there at scale at a price point that is competitive. And the technologies that the First Movers Coalition looks at, these are technologies that were identified as part of roadmaps for decarbonization of the sectors that I referenced. And these de decarbonization roadmaps were put together by something called the Mission Possible Partnership, working in conjunction with Mission Innovation, which you see here. And so what the First Movers Coalition is focused on is if you've got these technologies, again, we don't necessarily just wanna say, hey, they're there, they're really good for the planet. We want to put proof behind it. And that proof is actual demand. And so, as I mentioned, here are the sectors that we're focused on. Now, we did launch as an initiative at the sustainability of the Global Sustainability Conference, COP26 in Glasgow. Now, uh, 2021, so it's been a while. And when we launched, we didn't launch with all of the sectors that I mentioned. As the time has progressed, we've launched some more sectors. And we didn't actually launch the aluminum sector until basically mid part of our program. We are still waiting to launch that chemical sector that I mentioned as well. And by launching a sector, it means what we've done is we've created a demand commitment that companies sign up to. So this means that a company goes ahead and they're buying, again, there's not many companies who aren't buying either the materials or in the transportation sectors that we cover. They continue to buy the product and service that they bought before. Hopefully they continue to buy it from the suppliers that they've been buying it from. But now what they're saying is a certain percentage of the volume of that product and service, they now want it to meet a reduced GHG baseline. And why? Because that's the way to signal to that supplier that they really want that supplier to use these new technologies. Now, why is the new technology important? Well, it's not only important for greenhouse gas reductions and carbon reductions to address our climate emergency, it's also because to your point, some of these technologies are really making these sectors more effective and efficient. And that's really what we're looking forward to because let's all be honest, right? Right now, the future that we're facing, we're really needing to make sure, especially as we see what's happening in the Ukraine, you talked about energy affordability, it's now energy availability and that's not guaranteed. So. We're wanting to make sure that that efficiency is also energy efficiency as well. And this is where clean, innovative technologies become really important. So great, we have these technologies in the sector. And what does that mean as far as you've got a program that you've launched? Who's really signed up to this? Well, as you can tell here, we've gotten a number of companies. These are now companies who've made demand commitments doesn't mean that these are the companies who are actually supplying the technologies. It's the ones who buy these. Some of these names, I think, are pretty recognizable. We now have 71 companies, but it's not only companies who draw forward technologies into a market. There's a lot of other necessary enabling players. So you also see here that along with the companies, we have governments. Now, I mentioned that the genesis of the First Movers Coalition was a partnership between the World Economic Forum and the U.S. government. Well, now you see we're up to 12 governments, right? So we've had a number of governments join us. 
These are governments who are recognizing that it's really in the benefit of their domestic industry to also start transitioning to a decarbonized version of what they are right now. And for all the same reasons that the United States is wanting to do so as well. So this is a little bit about the companies that you see, the sectors uh, that they've signed up for, again, on the demand side. So these are companies who are buying these products and services. And of course, I've highlighted the countries who support us as well. But then when we talk about now aluminum, so what are we talking about when we say, oh, some company has signed up to make a demand, they're buying something and it's a little bit different. Well, we're talking about first and foremost, primary. And I think you and I, Joe, had a conversation earlier on. There's still, even though recycling is such an important aspect. And in fact, I think the aluminum sector is really a leader in the area of recognizing the importance of recycling, especially to where Robbie had talked about the need to really bring back into our domestic borders um, those materials that we're relying on. Recycling is important. There's still a whole lot of use of primary and that primary has a significant emissions footprint attached with it. And so we focus on primary. And as you see here, it's a, a small volume of primary. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to have companies who now make these demand commitments buy that primary aluminum. And we're wanting to have them talk with their suppliers about using that primary, getting that primary, utilizing the technologies that are identified as well. And here you see another uh, slide that talks a little bit about what those technologies are. And again, the emphasis here being that we are demand function, right? So a lot of the technology that we see in the clean energy space, these are not inconsequential from a cost perspective for a supplier to implement, right? And so what allows a supplier to actually make that investment? Well, it's a customer who not only says that they're interested, but it's a customer who actually signs an agreement. And so when we at the First Movers Coalition talk about demand commitments, these companies are not only signing up for this demand, we're really emphasizing putting that demand into an offtake agreement. So an actual contractual relationship between that demand company and the suppliers, because there's nothing like a contract that allows you to go to a bank and say, hey, I am now interested in making this investment in these technologies. Because of course, those banks aren't just gonna take your word for it. They wanna see a contract as well. They wanna see the demand side. So that's what the First Movers Coalition is focused on and particularly for the aluminum sector. And I think for us as well, there's, as I mentioned, a lot of activity in the aluminum sector, but also in the other sectors that we cover, the steel, the transportation sectors. And I don't know about you, but there's a lot of just fatigue about commitments and initiatives. So we wanted to, at the World Economic Forum, having the pleasure of dealing with uh, CEOs from, from most Fortune 100 companies and with many governments, is to address this fatigue. And so why recreate the wheel? So part of the ethos of the program is actually to work with the other programs or initiatives within that sector to leverage them as well. And you see some of the players that we're working with in the aluminum sector. And from this perspective, what it allows us to do is actually make sure that we capture advancements um, that are happening in the sector as part of our demand commitment. And then I also want to highlight that in addition to what we've been talking about as far as demand commitments, there is a lot that um, needs to happen in the space of what the program is focused on. And I'm sorry, I, I can't tell if, yes, okay, my slide moved forward. Um, it's always the challenge with these presentations. You think people are seeing what you're talking to, but you're not sure. So what you see here is the fact that we're also very much focused on moving from demand to 
this implementation. I mentioned that for us credibly, really success for the program in the aluminum sector and in the others is, are there agreements being made by those demand committers with those suppliers? Suppliers who actually are able to meet the uh, in-scope technologies that FMC has highlighted. And part of the challenge with that is, well, where are the suppliers? Where are the companies who are able to actually help meet this demand? So part of the activities that the First Movers Coalition is focused on for this year is evidencing supply. So if any of the companies that are listening in on this and hearing about the First Movers Coalition are saying, well, wait a minute. Yeah, you know, we've been thinking that we actually understand where the world is going to be competitive. We actually need to transition how we're operating. And we were thinking about the utilization of some of the technologies that were just highlighted. Well, those are companies that we want to talk to because we've got this massive demand signal. We now want to start attaching it to the supply. And for the supply, we've talked to a number of our demand companies and they've talked about, yeah, we're engaging with our suppliers, but you know, the First Movers Coalition, as I mentioned, these are innovative, clean technologies that we're trying to draw forward. They're not the bleeding edge. They're not this, it's a theoretical, it's a white paper or PowerPoint with lots of circles and charts and maybes. These are technologies that are there, but they're small scale, right? And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to actually pull them over that valley of death, make them more affordable, make them commercially viable, make them scaled and available for all industry uh, participants to use. And buying this cutting edge, not bleeding edge, isn't necessarily something that many procurement or purchasing teams know how to do. But increasingly, especially as we have lived through the last three years, which have created massive supply chain disruptions, the need to think alternatively about your supplier base, the need to be more innovative um, is a challenge that uh, is something that all companies have, have become aware of. And so not only is the First Movers Coalition, as you see here, focused on evidence and supply and putting that supply that we find into a supplier database so that everybody in the world knows these are the companies who are right at the leading edge for decarbonization. We're also doing something as mundane as having a summit on procurement because it's that mundane topic within companies where buying innovation is brand new and wanting to help companies understand how to do it. So this is some of the activities that we're doing and in closing, because I know I, I know that face of yours, Joe, and you're like, oh, do I have some questions about this program? Um, and in particular, what does this mean for the aluminum focus that you have? But let me just get this one already out there. When I start talking about, ah, oh, we're wanting to bring new technologies into the market and the way we want to do it is to have that demand signal. These companies really work with their suppliers and get those suppliers to make the change. The first thing that I hear is money, Nancy, this costs money. So where's that going to come from? In the same way that we're not just the commitments and let's hope things will change, we're also not ignorant about the fact that if you don't have line of sight to money, change isn't going to occur. So the First Movers Coalition brings with it a finance pillar. And this finance pillar runs the gauntlet from all the way at the I'm a demand company. I've made this commitment. This is kind of risky because I'm agreeing to buy something that's not really commercial in the market. I'm not sure that, you know, how much a new technology premium it's going to bear, but since it's not commercial yet, it's probably going to. So how do I protect against that risk that I've introduced into my organization? So kind of insuring against that risk to concessionary funding, so governments are paying for some of these innovations, all the way to funding for suppliers or startups. So we've got that accessible. So we're really committed. We bring a 12 government partner enabling ecosystem to address some of the policy and regulatory concerns and a finance pillar to bring the money to this as well. And so that kind of leaves me with the most important, which is I'm sure that people who've been listening today are like, 
oh, I can't wait to sign up. How do I sign up to this First Movers Coalition? I know that aluminum is one of the most important sectors to be active in. And so I want to be part of it. So I leave you with contact information. But with that, let me turn it back over to you, Joe, because I know you probably have some questions maybe, or maybe the audience does as well. That was excellent. Thank you for that, uh, especially the contact information. There'll be plenty of follow-up here. Um, again, for the audience, please put your questions in the Q&A section. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Nancy, two questions I have. Well, when we first started talking, I think it was in October, I cynically came to you and say, oh, gee, another commitment. This sounds great. And you quickly dismissed me of that notion. Uh, it, it, there are two things that you, you talked about here, if you can expand on a little bit. One, uh, the timing. Why now? Right? So the technologies have been emerging. Uh, the aluminum challenges are nothing new. But what's so special about this moment in time? And how is this going to work? Uh, and then kind of a follow on. Um, the realism here. Uh, this isn't some happy talk. You've got, uh, you talked about contractual agreements. This is real money from real people with real demand. Uh, the actual technologies. This is a competitive issue. This isn't do this for fun. No, this is, this, this is a genuine competitive issue for this sector. So let me stop there. Can you talk about timing, expand on that, and then expand a little bit more on, on the realism of this program? I appreciate the opportunity to do it. And uh, you're right, timing. So this program, most people are gonna expect me to say, yes, you know, Paris Accords by 2050. Uh-uh. Timeline for our program is we wanna pull these forward by 2030. And why 2030? Because there's no way that we're gonna meet any of these targets, 2040, 2050, if we don't start having the capacity to decarbonize transformatively these sectors that I've identified. And the only way you're going to do it is through the technologies that I've identified as well. And you may have noted, if you look holistically across all of the technologies that we're trying to pull forward, so the other sectors inclusive, there's also carbon capture in there as well. And if you took a look at the sectors that I highlighted, we also have in that carbon removal. So I want to be clear, we're focused twofold. One, if you're in one of the seven hard to abate sectors or economically essential sectors, then you need to be doing everything you can to bring in these new clean and innovative technologies now, which is why we're focused on this reality check of contracts because a memorandum of understanding isn't going to get you squat from a bank. It's not going to make the investments occur. So you gotta show those contracts. And why 2030? Because if we don't have these technologies pulled forward by that time, there's no way we're going to meet any of our 2040 or 2050, right? There's just no way. And then why do we have this kind of eighth sector, this carbon removal? Well, it's a recognition that we're already up the creek, if I may be so frank. And so to equip us with a paddle, one needs to already pull in some technologies that allow us to take out what we put in. And so before anybody writes into the question function of Zoom, oh yeah, carbon removals, that nature-based stuff, that's been in the news. Let me clarify that we're focused on engineered solutions, right? So these are solutions, same kind of idea. Pull forward technology, <clears throat> these ones, engineered solutions to where you're actually locking up carbo, carbon, excuse me, for a thousand plus years. And a forest fire isn't going to undo it. So I hope I answered some of your questions. You did. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, from the audience here, question from Chris. Uh, Novellus is a proud member of the FMC aluminum sector. Do you have a date for the Procurement Innovation Summit? And what is the plan to recruit additional members to the sector? Good question. Yes. So I have a semi-date. It will be in September of this year. And I want to give also a shout out, Novellus will understand. Um, for those who are looking, you may see this attractive truck grill behind me. Uh, I do want to highlight for people, this is not my personal choice of wallpaper in my home, even though it is really compelling. Uh, it's an example of the fact that I'm in the uh, space of another First Mover Coalition member, Volvo Group. Uh, who, of course, uh, are members in a number of our sectors. But basically, I reference this 
because they are one of the co-chairs for the planning for this Procurement Innovation Summit. And as Orvelis pointed out, they are one of the members of FMC who's also brought to the forefront the importance when we start talking about being real and being credible, that you got to bring people from the procurement function along with their chief technology officer or their chief risk officer together, right? Because these clean innovative technologies, what I hear when I talk to a number of our members is that you've got a, a tech team saying, oh yeah, this is great. And they're dealing with some of these technology providers and everything's going swimmingly. And then they bring it over to the procurement function. And the procurement function, which is rather risk averse, says, time out. Um, we have past performance requirements. We have boop, 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 boop. If qualifiers that have worked very well in the world that we've been in, they don't work very well in the very iterative innovation world that we're finding ourselves in to start decarbonizing. So this procurement summit is really highlighting some of the companies who've already figured out, I've got to work faster, more collaboratively, and I've got to figure out how to bring this innovation into my organization. Okay, okay. so along those lines, on the, if you're looking at, so you talked about the realism and the timing, talk about the uh, competitive nature of the, as these materials compete in the market, you're working on plastics, you're working on uh, steel, you're working on aluminum. How do you see these industries either uh, working together on some of these goals? Is the, is the market competition going to be a deterrent to achieving some of these carbon goals? So that's interesting. Um, this has actually been an, an evolution, I think, of even the First Movers Coalition. Let's just talk at a sectorial level. So and let's go back a couple of years. You know, it used to be that we would celebrate a single company stands up and says, I'm going to do, boom. and we're all like, well, wow, that's great. Um, well, we're beyond that, right? You can't do it. And in fact, it's the companies such as Novellus in this sector who are working with members of their value chain uh, and who've been very public about that, putting partnerships and projects together and at times even uh, engaging in what would be conversations with those they would deem competitors, understanding that it's everybody in that sector that needs to work together because that's the only way transformation will happen. We're not talking small incremental greening gains, right? We're talking wholesale double digit reductions in carbon for that sector. And so that's not going to happen by small agreements with one or two players. It really does take that entire value chain. And so, yeah, has there been um, a, a difference in how what you would have thought would be competitive pressure amongst uh, members within a sector? Has that been eye-opening and different? Yeah. And I think it's been really fantastic to see this particular sector understand the need to build these very innovative uh, partnerships to move forward. But as far as across all of the sectors, I think it's a great question. I'd love to be able to say, oh yeah, the First Movers Coalition, we're so holistic that all of the different sectors are working together and we're gonna, no. Uh, that, would, that, that would be uh, an, an untruth and, and uh, professionally and personally, I stay away from those. But um, you put a, a finger on a need which is we hear a lot of companies just generally, again, I'm from the World Economic Forum. Of course, we have the honor of, of hosting our annual meeting in Davos where we get a significant number of CEOs and, and uh, government representatives. And, and a lot of the CEOs uh, at, at this Davos have mentioned that um, they're needing to start thinking beyond even oh, I buy an aluminum, they're having to think, how do these adjacent sectors start playing? And I was heartened to see that they're even considering that. Can't say that that's happening yet and that somebody has a holistic plan, but those, that interest is there. That's really, okay, that's really good to hear. My next question was about uh, the obstacles here. This sounds like a great idea. You've got a great goals. And there seems to be some terrific initial support, but there are enough challenges to begin with and as you look at the, especially the aluminum sector, 
what are the known obstacles here? And then how is FMC going to help break through some of them? If this was a silver bullet, that'd be awesome. But looking at the cost pressures, energy pressures, there's, there, there's enough challenges already. But that's from our view. As you look at this, what are those roadblocks and how can this help break through some of those? Yeah, I mean, I think um, some of these roadblocks are, are ones that I had mentioned. One, you know, financial support for these investments, um, margins. So you've got first movers who, being a first mover is, uh, is a pretty considerable step forward on behalf of your sector because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to buy this and I know I'm going to have to pay that new technology premium and I'm willing to do it because... For my company's ethos, I don't just want to talk about it. I just don't want to put a report out there. I'm actually going to put my money there. So, you know, case in point for Novellus or Ball or Apple or just a number of the companies who are part of the aluminum sector for First Movers Coalition, I mean, you know, uh, they're, they're really committing their resources to it. And not everybody can do that. Not everybody will. So that's a big, that's a, that's a big challenge. It's also, uh, you know, just talking today about energy availability. So we'd like to emphasize renewable energy sources. Well, guess what? Even though those are coming up, they're not necessarily in all the geographies where you're wanting to do the kind of uh, work that's necessary, especially for the aluminum sector. And the grid isn't, you know, the investment in the grid hasn't really been um, kept up in a lot of geographies as well. So there's just that whole infrastructure as we start talking about it. So um, I think that's a, a challenge too. Interesting. Well, thank you for that. One thing I wanted to, you mentioned the recent Davos meeting. Uh, we certainly know about it and uh, maybe someone on this call has actually been there, but uh, you were in the room. Uh, you've been doing this for a while. And so can you give us, to go off topic a little, a little bit here, can you talk about that Davos meeting? What happened on the inside? Yeah, no, I mean, um, Davos, uh, we like to say it's, it's our annual meeting that happens in Davos, but I know that people like to say Davos, uh, and I catch myself doing the same. But uh, again, the World Economic Forum is honored to be able to host a number of these uh, leading figures. And really, it is an unparalleled opportunity for people who are feeling the pressure directly, the CEOs and these, these country leaders, but also nonprofit representatives and increasingly, of course, the youth representatives. And of course, if you're talking about environmental impact, or more importantly, a just and equitable transition to this new economy that we're talking about, indigenous representatives. So you bring them all together and we're basically uh, one big water cooler to where these conversations occur. And I think the difference for this year that was so compelling, and I'll be honest about it, is that you actually had, and now I can speak from my own experience, so I saw this, you had a Fortune 100 CEO sitting at the table, little round tables, um, the World Economic Forum is known for providing conspicuous amounts of really great strong coffee because you're wanting to engender these conversations, rolling up the sleeve, taking a big swig of that coffee, looking at a competitor across the table and saying, listen, you know, if, if we, us, the company, push this down into our supply chain and you did the same, we'd really make a compelling difference. And isn't it about time, right? Isn't it about time? And so the whole conversation to me, that was just one crystallization of CEOs sitting at the table, actually now saying, stop with purely only commitments. Commitments are good signals, but let's just get to the brass tacks of it all. And so I would say that this was, for my experience, the roll up the sleeves Davos. And lots of people really saying, how do we now get this done? Devil's in the details. Uh, and that's really what we need to, to focus on. Okay. So, and then that it leads into, so what does the next year look like as you, whether it be economic forum at large, aluminum specifically, what is, what is your vision here for 2023? Well, we have actually five areas that uh, I think I had highlighted in, in my presentation as well as to what does FMC focus on for 2023? 
The first, of course, we continue to want to bring members into the forum, particularly on the demand side, of course. But now we're being uh, in increasingly selective, not because it's we don't want members, but we want to make sure that we start bringing in the value chain, right? And Aluminum's really been the best example. Uh, I, I have to call out uh, Ball Corporation as, as an organization that has been tremendously um, understated, but over impactful because they recognize first and foremost, we need to bring in uh, the whole value chain. So they've been very active and, and very helpful in that space. Of course, Velas was mentioned as well. But so we're, we're looking for that. We're also looking for it from a government perspective. Um, I can't announce here, but there's one uh, government that we'll be bringing on. So we'll bring our number to 13. It's very, very active in the uh, mineral space. And so we're trying to be realistic if you're trying to decarbonize these sectors, which are the governments that actually either have the supply side in them or really have some policy influence that's necessary to unlock some of the challenges. And then of course, if we've got all this demand, you saw uh, our focus on evidencing supply. So we will have a supplier database. So again, any company who thinks that they can be part of the solution set, please reach out. We're gonna have that. But we're also having something called in-country workshops. So this is one in which we will be in the United States and we will want to talk about well, what does it mean to actually leverage these new clean technologies for the aluminum sector that needs to grow here in the U.S. domestic borders. So expect to see you there, Joe. But yes, those are just <laughs> some of the activities that we have planned. It's a jam-packed agenda. And of course, I can't help but reference again that procurement summit that will be happening in September. Because again, if you want to really leverage the change, the way that you need to do it is ink to paper, somebody make in an actual statement that's legally defensible, i.e. a contract, and then how do we best do that? And learning from the companies who are already doing it um, to make sure others will do so as well. Well, thank you. This has been terrific. So it's we got a real program at the right time with some serious commitments uh, and no shortage of activity coming up this year. So uh, thank you for uh, uh, the briefing on this. A lot here. Uh, we look forward to learning more. We'll keep our eye on this. Uh, so let me go ahead and wrap up. Again, thank you to the audience for joining us. We hope this was very helpful. Uh, I'll send a recap and possibly share some of the slides with those who attended. Um, thank you for everyone coming here. Again, a reminder, uh, the Center for Strategic Industrial Materials will be releasing our report, Energy Problems and Energy Solutions, later this month. So keep an eye out on that. A lot of aluminum work coming out from First Movers Coalition and from the Center. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.